The supraclavicular brachial plexus block was for many years known as the spinal of the arm, dense, fast, and complete. For these reasons, it remains a core technique for many anesthesiologists. In this video, we'll discuss the anatomy, indications, and how to perform it safely. The supraclavicular brachial plexus is approached just cephalad to the clavicle at the level of the distal trunks or proximal divisions. The plexus is packed tight in this region between the first rib and the clavicle, making it a convenient location to anesthetize the entire upper limb with one injection. Note that as a plexus travels inferior laterally, the phrenic nerve continues straight down into the chest by traveling medially off the anterior scalene muscle. The result is that while phrenic nerve blockade is not as frequent as with inner scalene, it occurs in up to roughly half the time with supraclavicular depending on the volume of local anesthetic used. The supraclavicular brachial plexus block is excellent for anything on the upper limb from the shoulder down to the fingertips. Note that there is no coverage of the medial arm as that's the intercostal brachial nerve territory. We use supraclavicular block for forearm, wrist, and hand surgery, for AV fistula creation, and for upper limb trauma. While a catheter technique is certainly possible, it's a shallow target in a highly mobile area, and catheters tend to be at risk for displacement. We prefer to place infraclavicular catheters for long-term upper limb analgesia as they stay put longer. Positioning is important. It helps to have the head of the bed elevated somewhat and the head turned away and flexed to the contralateral side. The arm is adducted and a bump or pillow is under the back. You want to create some working space over the supraclavicular fossa. Turning the patients laterally can make it easier to place the probe and needle in challenging patients. The probe is placed on the midpoint of the clavicle and the needle will enter in plane from the lateral aspect. One mistake novices make is not tilting the probe into the chest. This maneuver takes a fuzzy, less than ideal image of the artery and plexus and makes it crisp and clear. Here's the relevant sonoanatomy. You'll see the subclavian artery and the plexus just lateral to it appearing like a bundle of hypoechoic grapes. Underneath the artery, you'll see a few bright white lines, and it's important to know which is which. The one that casts an acoustic shadow and is immobile is the first rib. It's usually directly under the artery, but not always. Beside the rib shadow, you can appreciate the pleura, which is shimmery and slides from side to side with respiration. The pleura doesn't cast acoustic shadows. Here we see it again, this time reversed. You see the plexus lateral to the artery and the rib underneath. The trapezius muscle is seen prominently on the lateral side. The needle is advanced from the lateral aspect, taking care not to contact the plexus, but rather slide under it. In this case, we have some room, but hydrodissection is often required. This location beneath the plexus adjacent to the artery has been called the corner pocket, and it's important to get some local anesthetic here in order to anesthetize the inferior trunk. The goal here is to visualize the plexus peeling off the rib and artery floating the plexus sheath up with local anesthetic. A second injection is made in order to sandwich the plexus between two layers of local anesthetic. Again, careful hydrodissection ensures that the needle never touches the plexus or even the sheath. And here are some tips for the supraclavicular brachial plexus block. Number one, don't blow up the sheath like a grenade. Stay outside the sheath. Placing the needle directly inside the cluster of grapes is a common novice mistake and not without risk. These investigators inserted needles carefully inside the supraclavicular brachial plexus sheath of cadavers, trying to stay outside any obvious nerves or fascicles. After injecting two tenths of a mil of ink, they found that there was subperineural ink deposition in 24% of cadavers. We know that violating the perineurium puts nerves at risk. We also know that local anesthetic placed outside the sheath results in an awesome arm block. So let's just stay outside, shall we? Number two. This area is very vascular. There are a number of arteries that arise from the subclavian, sometimes snaking their way across or even through the plexus. Always use the Doppler function before inserting your needle. This is a good practice with any block, but a must with supraclavicular. And finally, the plexus can be remarkably variable in its anatomic location. Sometimes we see nerves on the anteromedial side of the artery. It's for this reason that blocks with modest volumes, 
for example, less than 15 to 20 mils, tend to fail periodically. The ED95 appears to be roughly 30 to 40 mils, so keep that in mind when you're planning the block. Of course, if you see fantastic spread with less, that's great, but plan on needing as much as 30 each and every time.